Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. I'll praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord set prisons free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down and loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigners and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. Amen. So, you know, my goal in reading the psalm today is, um, is only to elaborate the words that this psalm has already, is already there. And Psalms 146, I, as we just read, it's pretty easy to follow along. So I believe the word from scripture uh, itself has the power to speak to you and speak to you individually. Uh, but what I'm going to do is read the psalm aloud and just encourage the church with a few, few thoughts. You know, the psalmist starts with praise, 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 and more praise. As you can tell, uh, this psalm is a psalm of praise. And if there's anything that you can get away from anything I said is that uh, in the psalm that I'm about to read is that praise is important for your walk with Christ. That praise is important with your walk with Christ. So verse 1 and verse 2 says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord my soul. I'll praise the Lord my, all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. You know, the psalmist used praise four times in two verses. And I wanted to just put a question out there just to ask, and I'm sure, you know, I don't want you to answer it, but is there anything wrong with giving too much praise to our God? And I know the answer that we all will say is no, of course not. And the Bible also says that God is close to those who call upon him, that he is enthroned upon the praises of his people, so, of course not. When we praise God too much, he adores it. And that is something that we need in our life. Our God is a God who is worthy to be praised. And when we are praising him, even right now in your midst, he is there. So there's no such thing as praise, too much praise. But we can say that there is such thing as no praise. And that is something that if we're not praising God, in other words, drawing closer to him, then he won't be near to you. And that's going to be talked later in the psalm. Something we can understand from the first two lines is that praise or drawing uh, to him is an individual act. It comes from within us. And we can see that in the psalm. The psalmist is clearly expressing joy and worshiping God for his goodness. And I think that's a great reminder that our God is good. And we can look back at his goodness and recognize from the past that he is good, from the present right now, this week, he's been good. And then he also has a plan that is good for us in the future. And that's just something that when I was really meditating on this psalm, I recognized that when it says, my soul, I'll praise the Lord, my soul, that, you know, whatever we are praising is an experience that we have with God. And that praise is coming from within us. The call of the psalmist is to encourage us individually to give praise to God. My soul, I will praise, I will sing praise. That's what it says in verse 1 and 2. Now the second question that I just want to bring up is if we're not turning to God, if we're not praising God, then who are we praising? And what I mean by this is that when we are in, the, when we are in need, when we're in a time of crisis, when there's some stressful situation in our life, who are we turning to? And I'm not perfect in any way, and this message is for me. But here's an example from 
my current situation as a medical school student, you know, our, our school and many schools, they'll put pressure on students to perform, to know how to respond to clinical scenarios, to be able to get, to prepare for exams at a quick pace. And the reason why they do this is they're trying to put some difficulty or some stress in your life so you can handle more later. And at this stressful situation, many people, even Christians, they turn to many different things. Some people turn to the psychiatrist. Some people turn to maybe a relationship. Some people turn to partying and drugs. And these are ways that people are seeking. They're not, you know, they're going after something of this world. Even yesterday, a uh, pastor who was speaking said that when the stock market crashed because of the coronavirus, many people who store their things in this world, they lost everything. The stock market crashed and suddenly the next strategy is how can I regain that wealth? How can I make the strategy to you know, continue on? As Christians, we know that God is the provider and that God is ultimate over everything. The knowledge is there, but the question is, is when we have, when there's a time of crisis, who are we turning to? If we're not turning to God, who are we turning to? Let's look at verse three and four. Do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground and on the very day their plans to nothing. So here we come to the reality that when we turn to things of this world, it's very short lived. The psalmist has that experience. He's also ex telling us that whatever we're turning to in this world is only for a short time. The strategies that we learn from this world is only for a short time. So when the spirit departs, they return to the ground and the plants to nothing. So who do we turn to? Verse five and six says, blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. Amen. So that's a reminder that our God is awesome and big. He is worthy to be praised. Our help and our hope is in the Lord, the maker of heaven, earth, the sea and everything in it. That's what the Psalm said. So remember I told you earlier that we're going to come back to a place where we talk about what is wrong when we don't praise God. And the reason is this, that our God, as we're going to read through the Psalm, is a big God. And everything, everything in this world is praising him. So the heaven, the earth, seas, and everything in it is praising him. So if you don't praise him, if you don't feel like praising him because you had a bad day or whatever situation, he, you know, he doesn't need your praise to be God. You know, our God is a big God. I just said that. He doesn't need your praise to be God. He is God. And he is not dependent on us. I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, you know, another example I was thinking of to just portray it in a more simpler way is that we have a father. And if I don't have a relationship with my father, it doesn't make him not my father. He is my father. Without him, I won't be here. He is my father. But what I'm missing out is on is that relationship and the benefits of that relationship. If we don't praise God, still the creation will praise God. And it says that in the Bible. It says that even the rocks will praise God. The skies proclaim of his handiwork. So the second point is he is faithful forever. So this last five verses, I'm just going to quickly go through them. And it just gonna, it's going to talk about the awesomeness of God. And out of these five verses, there might be like around 10 things that you can take from it. And you can take one or two and just reflect on how God has been good to your life. That he is, verse six says, he is the maker of heaven and earth, the seas and everything in it. So we just talked about this, that everything is his creation and you are his creation. He remains faithful forever. The Lord keeps his promises. Verse seven, he upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Our God is a God of justice. So if there's anything, any injustice in the world, our God is the one who's going to deal with it. The Lord sets the prisoners free. Amen. So we know the verse, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. So we sing that all the time. 
And if you have a burden that's holding you down, any chain that's preventing you from praising God, then all we have to do is enter his presence and those chains will be broken. The Lord gives sight to the blind. Verse 8 says, the Lord gives sight to the blind. And we take sight as a privilege. You know, many people who are blind, they really are dependent on a lot of things. <clears throat> They're dependent on the trust of the caretaker. They're dependent on their equipment. They're dependent that they basically have to trust that no one is stealing from them, right? And it is in the dark that you recognize that God is carrying you. So, you know, what I'm trying to come down with in all of this is that in these stressful situations, we're going to see God working in our life. The Lord lifts those who are bowed down. And I just want to stop here and just think again about the verses that we just read and how much this passage is foreshadowing the words of Jesus. I mean, didn't Jesus also say that he didn't come for the righteous, but came to save the sinners? You know, this God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know that from scripture, that the same God that the psalmist is speaking about is the God that we know in the New Testament. And the verse six says, he is faithful forever. So he is for people like us, and it's never too late to turn to God. The Lord loves the righteous. Verse nine, the Lord rushes, watches over the foreigners and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord. So what I wanted to say here is the Lord wins all our battles. Whatever, whatever situation we're in, we can come and turn to our God because he is faithful. And, and if we are not part of his plan, if we're not part of, we're not turning to him and we're turning to the world, we're going to only lead to frustrations. But the ways of the Lord are right. The Lord reigns forever. So verse 10, the Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for generations. Praise the Lord. So no matter what, our God is an awesome God, and he is enthroned on the praises of his people. He will never, he will always be near to those who praise him, and he will always help them. We need to know that the battle belongs to the Lord, and he is calling us He's calling us to turn to him. So with the psalm, I just wanted to remind you guys and encourage you as a church, as we continue into worship, that we have a God who is mighty to be praised. And all we have to do is turn to him. So I just want to encourage you to keep praising and just remember praise is a big part of our life as Christians. So praise the Lord.